Well, welcome everybody. I know that we were unable to uh, hold the club meeting last night with the uh, current COVID-19 uh, uh, situation. Um, and uh, we did have an alternative plan for last night, uh, which would have, had there been time, included me doing a bit of a presentation on Pelican Focus. So I thought, uh, given that we couldn't do it, I might uh, just put together a little video and um, see if that gets the, gets the, the, the information out there. Um, a couple of weeks ago, several weeks ago, we had Brian Russell, Russell come and talk to us about macro photography and in particular, he mentioned focus stacking. And what focus stacking in is, is, is a technique whereby multiple images can be put together in into one image and each of the images as you'll see on this example here have different points of focus um, the the uh, software you can use can be photoshop or there's one or two others as uh, rent focus but what this is about tonight is helicon focus uh, it's not a it's a very powerful piece of software not particularly cheap, but uh, it uh, it's specifically designed around focus stacking, and it does a very good job of it. And it has some unique features that I don't think the opposite the, the the opposing products actually have. Um, so, to start with, what I thought I'd do is I'd pick up an image which might be familiar at the moment in this current uh, current climate, just as a very quick example of what it does. So this is an image, it's actually uh, 11 JPEG images. I'm going to export it so that I'm talking while it's actually processing. And I'm going out to Helicon Focus. I'll go Export. So it's 11 images. Uh, the camera was um, set on a fixed focus, on a macro lens, and the camera was moved towards the image uh, probably about a millimeter or so at a time a few millimeters at a time in the case of this one the ones later on that i'm going to show you it, it was as small as a millimeter um, so we've got 11 images here and we've got they're just this at this stage this one is just jpeg we've got image number one you'll find the focus is pretty good at the front and image number 11 you'll find the focus is pretty good at the back, but at the expense of the front. So what we're attempting to do is to get an image that's great from front to back. In Helicon Focus, there are uh, several different methods that we can use for our stacking. I've never used method A, which is weighted average. Um, I generally use method B, which is what they call a bit uh, depth map. And what, uh, what they say is that um, depth method B selects the source image containing the sharpest pixel and uses this, inf this information to form a depth map. This method imposes strict requirements on the order of images that should always be consec consecutive, perfectly renders textures on smooth surfaces. And method C, which we'll, we'll, we'll use a little later, uses a pyramid approach to image processing, dividing image signals into high and low frequencies, give good results in complex cases with intersecting objects and deep stacks, though it does include increased contrast and glare. So you use each method where it's best suited. This one, we're going to use method B, and we have the option of changing the radius. So it's looking at contrast across pixels and where the highest contrast is, is where it's most in focus. So we can change the radius of pixels that it's looking at, and we can change how it deals with those pixels, just suffice to say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go render, and what that will do, it'll go through the stack of images, and it will, it will align them. Now bear in mind that the, the camera, the, because the camera's moving on a, um, on a rail or the focus, the actual um, images at the back are a different size from the images at the front. So it has to do a bit of resizing. 
What this has done is it's gone and put them all together into a, into a stack. And if I zoom in on it, you will see, whoops, sorry. You'll see we're pretty good in focus at this point. This is one to one, we're viewing at one to one. And the right hand image is the stacked image. The left hand image is the individual image. It's one of them. And you'll notice that this particular one at the back on the left is still quite blurry. If we were to, for example, go to that final image, you'd find that would be much sharper at the back. But you'll see this forward texture is not sharp. So if we went to this image, that might be where we're picking up the middle texture from. It just depends. It uses the various bits of different images in order to build the image. Uh, if, if something isn't quite right, we do have the option to do a little bit of retouching and we can pick up information from one image and paste it onto the other. Uh, we're not doing that at this point in time. That's not the purpose of this. So when we've got our stacked image, all we simply do is it, it went through and found them all. We just go save. And I'm going to just call this test. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG into the same folder as the others. It tells me to exit this once I'm finished. So I'm going to exit out of that and it will import test into Lightroom. And there it is. And you'll find once the image builds, so if I, if I was to, um, if I was to have a look, if you were to have a look at that, you'll find that as we scroll around it, it'll be pretty sharp all the way around. That's an example of focus stacking. One of the problems with that though is that that is just a raw file and we could have changed different settings in order to have got the result we wanted. It was just a JPEG file so I can't really edit the file. Um, what we want to be able to do is to possibly stack raw files. Now in my case I saved them as a DNG file because for me that works better. And all I'm going to do is take my images that, I, in actual fact, I'll show you these images first. So as we go through, you'll see that each of these images, you'll notice the frame is changing slightly, but it's getting, the, as it goes, I'm moving the camera a millimetre at a time, and that's all the depth of focus you have at F8 at, uh, at this this little uh, model is probably only about 40 millimeters high so we're, we're shooting at about um, half size in in real terms um, or one to two sorry um, we're gradually moving through the images and it goes into into focus at different points so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick these images and there's 27 images and I'm going to export them and you'll notice this time it was a DNG file so it's a raw file I'm going to go out to DNG and I'm going to export and this will export these 27 images into Helicon Focus Once we're in Helicon Focus, the procedure is exactly the same. It might take a little longer to build previews. I'm not going to go through all the possible settings, tuning settings, just simply to show how the process works. So here we go, render with the default uh, method B and the default radius of eight pixels and smoothing of four pixels. And you'll see as it goes through that this will be shifting through. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you should see, eventually, the, the, the makings of a, a depth map. So we're, 
as we move back through the, as we move through the stack it's finding the parts that are most in focus what it's also doing is it's resizing the image so that because we're compensating for the fact that the lens was moving towards or the camera was moving towards the subject so the size was changing so it's actually resizing a little bit and it's working its way down through the stack until it's completely analysed each image. It does take a while. I believe you can do stacks of up to a hundred or more images, or even more, um, but you do need to be a little bit patient if you're doing that. So we're getting towards the pointy end now. And on the left, you would have seen the image changing slightly because that's as it's sampling each individual image. It's showing us an update of each individual image as it's been moving through. So now we're getting to the point where pretty much the front of the, the screen is in, in focus. The front of the, the lens cap that I've put it on, or the, the rear cap of a lens. And here we have our stepped image. Now bear in mind this is about 40 millimetres tall. If I zoom in on this at one to one, and I'll sample it here, you'll find that we've got every little piece of detail from the leading edge of the, the rear cap up from the lens through the, the model. We've got little spots of paint, we've got bits of dirt, and I did clean this, but obviously not well enough. Um, but right from front to back, that image is pin sharp. It goes without saying that the camera's on a tripod. So, the main difference with this one, you'll notice it's actually cropped a little bit because the, the front, once the smallest image can only fit to the smallest image, the one that was closest to the camera. So you need to leave a little bit of room around it. If there were any problems with that, we could fix it up in retouching. We're not going to. And we're just going to stick with the method that I used. We're now going to go to saving. And we're going to save it as a DNG file. So it's a raw file. Test two. And once it's saved, it'll prompt us to go out back out of close this program and it will go back into and it'll import it into Lightroom and then collapse the stack so that I can just see the image itself. Here's test two and the nice thing about that is that as I said it's a raw image so we can we can um, alter the white balance to whatever we want or as shot, we can alter the exposure without losing any data. Uh, we can pull detail out of the shadows. We can recover stuff from the, the lights. You cannot do that with a JPEG file. So that's where we're at. I'll just, um, I'll just, uh, you could also change the, the film profile or anything like that. So, 99% of the time for me that seems to work uh, you get a great result um, just simply using the default but occasionally you'll have a problem and I'm going to show you what that problem is this is a similar sized object it's a small car it's um, it's 28, it's 28 um, JPEG images that I've used for this example. But I've done two samples here. There's one and there's a second one using a different method. And I'm going to go back into Helicon Focus now and show you what the difference is between the two methods. So we're opening up 28 images, sorry. Um, 
Got it out of order. They're the ones I want, not that one. Export it to, sorry, just straight Helicon Focus. Export. And we'll give it a bit of time, but that will um, that will come across. The other thing of note is that I've just used static objects. Um, in real terms, you might be more likely to be um, photographing a fungi or a small insect. Ob obviously, the subject cannot move. So it's got to be no wind, um, no movement. Um, otherwise, the, the process will not work. Perfect for um, fungi, uh, because often the, it doesn't matter what the exposure times are, they can be quite long. And these were shot, I think, at f8. So here we've got all of our images, and the first thing I'm going to do is run method B. 28 images, and it will go through and it will build a stack. When you first look at that, the, the appearance is that it's quite good until I'll show you the flaw that can sometimes occur. So being JPEGs, it's moving a little bit quicker than the DNG files. And here we go, we've got our stacked image. Now, the, f the first photo on this, the front of this piece of timber that I sat them on was in focus. Obviously everything else is, is not. But there's the, there's the lead edge of that timber. And probably about three or four from the back. The back wheel is pretty much in focus. And there's a, there's a hair that's got down there. But the back wheel is pretty much in focus. On the stacked result, that's done quite a good job of merging the two. And if I was to look at the, the stacked result, which is on the, the right hand side, We've got an image which has picked up a tremendous amount of detail. Bearing in mind we've got a depth of field of probably about a millimetre. Even shows the missing, the missing headlight. Every little bit of dirt and dust and, and chips on the paint on this, on this little model. But the problem is, if you look in this area here, around the wheels, it's had quite a hard time trying to work out on some of them how it should merge them because really we shouldn't have this blurry bit back here. We should have a, a direct step from the edge of the tyre to the background, not this soft bit around the edge. And that's one of the problems with this depth map. I think because some of the images are a long way out of focus and it, it doesn't quite work out where it's going to put everything together. This is where the pyramid method comes in, method C. If I render that, this is looking at it in a different way. There are trade-offs in, in some respects, but on difficult subjects, it seems to do a better job. And it's working through quite quickly on this. And you'll notice down the bottom, I'm going to have both methods saved. So I've got the, the method B, one that I did, above the method C one I did. So I can compare the results between the two.
we're nearly there there we are now what I'll do now is I'm going to see this is a bit smoother I'm going to go in at a hundred percent and I'm going to show you that detail around the edge of that wheel so what we're looking for is in this area the pyramid sample has done a much better job of of rendering that detail around the edge so sometimes it's appropriate the whole thing looks a little bit noisier and grainier but I guess that's just one of the, the, the trade-off but the actual edge of detail is is much better um, within the model within the areas where that transitions to something a long way in the foreground from anything else so we'll just finish with that we'll just save that save it as a JPEG it could be a TIFF if we wanted test 4 and save exit out of this close close this it's coming up with an error and the reason it's coming up with that error is because I did two t two different tests and one of the results I didn't save I don't want to save it so I'm going to exit and it'll bring it into um, it'll bring it into Lightroom and there we've got our beautiful sharp little model of of a um, of a car uh, there will be all little artifacts that need to be retouched um, sometimes there might be something on the sensor or um, other other issues and where they've all gone together it do doesn't always end up very tidy so you do have a little bit of work to do and it's worth it worse in method c um, but that's all I've got for you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you another time. All keep well. Bye.